Hello and welcome back to my playthrough of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Now, this is the first episode proper of my playthrough. The previous two videos were, I guess, part A and part B of the introduction. So I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm not going to discuss anything here. If you um, want to see me go through character creation in exhausting detail, please watch the one hour and 20 minute previous video. <laughs> right, here we go. Now, the other thing I should say is that I'm not going to be reading out all the, the text as we go. I know a lot of playthroughs um, do that, but um, I'm more going to be providing some commentary on it. Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori Swordlord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. However, I am going to be letting, of course, the voice lines play out. Now, the game is only partially voiced, and it, it's, I guess, considering its length, I would say it's um, minimally voiced, or, or, you know, somewhere between partially and minimally. <laughs> um, basically, not a lot of it is voiced, and there's a lot of reading involved in it. As we play, I will, you know, I'm not going to rush through the text as if I was doing some sort of speed run or demonstration of really hard difficulty i'm gonna allow enough time for somebody to to pause if they want to read it but basically i'm going to be um uh, paraphrasing and commenting on the story as we go but if it's voiced i'll let it play out this is a nice picture here this is Lindsay, whose voice you can hear who reads out these uh, these text boxes um she's a she's a bard and she's going to be our chronicler Where are they? This is taking forever! It didn't even say what this was for, just that the Eldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Eldori anyway, rich folk? So this is the first um, of our future party members we meet, Amiri, who's a barbarian. If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Eldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. So one of the things the game's got, this is Tartuccio, um, who's a, a second party member we meet, although he's only a temporary party member, for reasons that will become obvious. You've got in-text pop-ups, like this, and I will try to um, hover over them, so if somebody wanted to, to read about Brevoy or the Aldori Sword Lords, they could see it there. Now, um, basically, just to provide a bit of commentary, um, Alice here has been called to some gathering of heroes and mercenary cell swords. For some reason, the Aldori, one of the Aldori sword lords, has uh, has called this group of people, and nobody really knows why. And we are in uh, Bravoy. In fact, we're in the city of Restoff, which is part of Bravoy. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Hush! Quiet! They're coming! And this is Lindsay here, whose voice you'll get very, um, very familiar with. Um, she provides the, um, she writes the journal, so if you look in your journaling game, it's written as if it's Lindsay's book here. And she also does the, um, inter-chapter, um, voiceover. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori, and this is Lord Mayor Yosef Selimius of Restov. Welcome to my mansion. So this this sets the scene as um, you, you you're in this enormous mansion belonging to uh, Jamandi Aldori here, and uh, who obviously commands enough influence to have the mayor of the city come and visit for this particular event. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless. Exactly what Restov needs. So, what exactly is this task we've been called here for? Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevoy's border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the Stolen Lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, None of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. So it seems from that <clears throat> that um, the Sword Lords have cooked up some sort of plan whereby, um, you know, they want somebody to go out and, uh, you know, claim this region. But as I'm sure you can tell, with even just that hook, it seems like there's some sort of political game being played here. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head. And you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? So yeah, that's that's it. That's the hook of the um, of the f whole of the first chapter of the game. Basically, you um, Alice here has uh, you know if you think about her backstory, she's she's a Fey um, bloodline sorceress. She's heard something about this region, and um, she's agreed to to take part in this in this expedition. She's got wind that this is where it's going and she wants to uh, uh, explore the links between her own magical heritage and uh, this region so we get a number of questions here and this is the you know this format of dialogue box is um, you know very traditional CRPG it's almost identical to the Baldur's Gate one um, we kind of want to know a bit more and I think the most um, the most important question here is number three that you know we've sort of sussed that there's something up here so so why on earth have they cooked up this plan don't ask stupid questions why should you even care what they have to gain and why that's for lady aldori and i to discuss it's none of your concern your only concern is to swing your sword around or whatever it is you do yeah, and uh, as you can tell, um, Tatuchi is a bit of an asshole, <laughs> and he doesn't get much better. Of course we stand to benefit from this enterprise, but if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, well, please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with. Not bandit gangs and monster hordes. So it sort of seems clear that this, like on the face of it at least, is some sort of power play that um, uh, the Sword Lords need allies, and they've sort of cooked up this plan that maybe if they, if they, you know, basically grant, if they recognise baronies in in the Stolen Lands, then those baronies would uh, support them in whatever you know, issue they've got. What is that? Smell in the air. Is it the smell of unspoken words and political intrigue? So um, this is Kaesi who um, has sussed that there's more going up now. Now this is a, a, a DLC companion here, and uh, a bit it's sort of quite common in in DLC that you you when they add a, a companion like this, you you can't really get away from them. <laughs> I remember the, when um, the the enhanced editions of enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate was released. The um, the beam dog companions like uh, Nera and Dawn and Rasad. Like one of the complaints about them was that you just couldn't escape from them. They were sort of they were very in your face, including having their own sort of cutscenes and everything. <laughs> and with the with the DLC here, you kind of feel like KS is uh, um, stuck with you. Now, one thing you should bear in mind is is it's worth paying attention to what she says and how she talks, and also the colour of her eyes in the portrait. So, 
if you're playing along at home, you can um, uh, keep an eye on those eyes. Anyway, um, if there's a whole group of us, who's going to get this title? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. Yeah, he is a little asshole. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. So we've uh, we've met Tartuccio, Lindsay, uh, Kaesi, uh, Amiri, and now this is the fifth companion here, Harem, who's a who's a cleric, and he's a, a very particular type of cleric, which I'll talk about um, later. His his god is uh, is rather an odd one, you know, to be a cleric of, and uh, as you can tell from his lines, he's a bit miserable. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. Uh, yep, go right ahead. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. <laughs> it kind of implies that it's some sort of you know, battle royale style. Um, you know, kill everyone else and you can be the baron. But it's, it's we're, we're we're neutral good. We're 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 going to earn our baronial title. And uh, um, we're not going to click this. What rewards can we expect? This is kind of a, a dumbass choice. Like I think it's quite clear that the reward is the barony um, and and um, the support of the sword, lord, sword lords. Anyway, why not just recognise the stag lord? That's a good point. As I see it, this stag lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? And uh, this is this is the sixth companion, uh, Jay Thao. Um, you can see she's a, she's an elf of some sort. I'll talk about her when we meet her in game. Perhaps because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> And that's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. So the the, the sword lords, uh, Jamandi here, yeah, she's got some principles. Otherwise, here yeah, could just recognise this this stag lord, you know, who we don't really know anything about, apart from he's supposedly a bandit. But as she's as um, Chethal said, like uh, you know, aren't a lot of barons <laughs> started as. Um, uh, one, one person's baron is another person's bandit. Anyway, it's clear as day. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again. With all my heart for replying to this call, the flare in your eyes reveals your courage, the unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. Yeah, he's really laying it on thick there. You kind of feel like he'd prepared that, that speech. It's uh, his sort of... You know, rallying cry just feels a bit uh, false, really. So we finally get control. Hi, my name's Lindsay. No, we don't. I'm aboard, though this is my first real adventure. So, <laughs> shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? So, <laughs> I might as well talk a bit about uh, about uh, Lindsay. Lindsay's going to be in our party for the entire game. Um, you know, what's uh, what's an adventure without a, a bard? To chronicle it, um, and Alice here, she's she's neutral good, she's enthusiastic. We sure will. Just wait, with plenty of great feats in store. <laughs> I have no doubt. Kind of related, I wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown or whatever it is Baron's wear. Doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. 
When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This, this is the person I'll write my book about. <laughs> so, so I, so, so Alistair immediately likes Lindsay because, <laughs> because Alice doesn't like uh, uh, Tartuccio, so, you know, a um, bit of bonding here. And uh, there's, unfortunately, there's no option to say, yeah, Tartuccio is, a, is an asshole. Instead, wait a book? Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or, gods forbid, Tartuccio? No way. <laughs> no way, indeed. So, uh, of course, the, the dwarf is a harem, and this is Jethel, the scythe lady. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> and uh, this one, the barbarian that's referring to, to Amiri, so I'm going to say not a bad plan. Deal. All right. I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. Yeah, so, so, Lindsay, there, her, her whole thing is she's come here to basically attach herself to someone else. But uh, being a bard, she's very competent in her own right, as we'll see as we play through. But uh, we've we've sort of recruited a, a a follower, or you know, theoretically. Now we can talk to people, but mostly they just spit a uh, a single line. So Tartuccio, Jamaldi. Now this is um, try and zoom in. This is Kestin Garris, who's a who's a reoccurring character in the game. Yeah. So they obviously think, they're obviously talking about something when he says he's double the guard. Jethel? Yeah, so she, she susses that something's up. And Harem's down here. Let me just... Just want to double check. Yeah. Um... Turn tutorials off. There we go. Harem is so yeah. He's a worshipper of Grotus. One thing you might not realise if you're in the habit of just running out the, the door here is that if you hang around long enough in the hall, everybody everybody leaves, and you are left all on your lonesome. Anyway, we're not going to faff around in here. There's not much to do. But you can see here's Alice Tiefling. And I'll just sort of say, we come with a few scrolls, two scrolls of magic missile, one of mage armor, one of ear piercing scream, um, a crossbow, because apparently all mages use crossbows when they're um, in, in Pathfinder, and a dagger. And this is, this is Casey, who um, doesn't have very much to say either at this point. So basically, the scene is now set for the prologue, which is essentially a, a tutorial that we play through. Help! Help! Yes, so what's going on? This is our lovely room. It's very well furnished. Um, yeah, what's going on? The mansion's under attack. We need to help. Some felons broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers or we'll all be cut down one by one. 
Yeah, they don't sound like they're having a nice time. <laughs> yeah, so finally, some action. I don't so, we've actually um, had a really good initiative roll here. We've rolled 22. So, in combat, one of the most important things is, is the initiative roll, which determines you know, how you act. In, in what order you, you act and whether you're flat footed or not. Of course, it's it's on the face of it, it's more obvious in turn based because it determines the turn order. But in real time with ports, it's equally as important. And I'll be paying a lot of attention to initiative roles. The other next thing we can do is we can inspect enemies. Of course, at the moment, we haven't met any of these, uh, any of these checks. Um, you can see there. We failed in the log because we don't really have the requisite skills. We need party members to, to pick up the slack. Because we've um, made our initiative roll, this should be quite easy. Stand down. <laughs> I say, um, obviously we're not going to uh, have much luck uh, firing crossfoot into space. They have a you offend me. big penalty to their uh, to hit so hopefully yeah see this is the problem with playing a, a melee class that even the first so first thing I next thing I wanted to point out is that um, they have abysmal dexterity um, they have a <laughs> abysmal stretch basically they're these this this assassin is designed to be beatable even with the most gimped character you can possibly create. You could make someone who was, you know, sevens across the board and they should be able to, to hit this uh, this assassin. Anyway. Doesn't have anything very interesting. We'll take this chain shirt. Yeah, and we'll take that dagger as well. Um, equipment we have a shared, a shared stash which everything goes in, and if we um, if we reach these breakpoints here, and here it will um, affect things like movement rate, and especially overland movement. Right. Just going to check um, my sound options just very briefly. Okay, hopefully that hasn't, uh, hopefully I'm now not drowned out by the, by the music. So, <laughs> doesn't look very good in here, does it? We're going to take all that. So, a lot of the stuff you see to pick up is, is vendor trash in, as it's sort of said, rather impolitely, um, such as this, this instance, and you sort of know it because it says a merchant will pay well for it, and it just sort of has a price and a low weight. the same tapestry everywhere um <clears throat> now i should just talk about this i'm not sure if um, anybody watching is familiar with the Baldur's gate one quest given by firebeard elven hair in berigost where he asks you to go collect a a, a book um, like tale of the coin and when you do it he gives you a copy of um a book, Tale of the Dead 3, that's like a bit of foreshadowing of the overall plot. And uh, this presence of this book here, whether intentionally or not, is a, a little bit of the same. That um, this book discusses, you know, this land has devoured so many great empires as if it was unwilling to bear life. The Kingdom of the Cyclopses, and, and this is a theme running through here, was the first victim of the curse. And, you know, it talks about curses, one after the other, leaving only pain behind. But who knows, this great civilization was turned to dust. And that's what I'm teaching you. So this... This is, yeah, a little bit of foreshadowing of what's to come. We're going to take all of that and go to our first encounter. Now, on our little taskbar, we're going to ditch certain stuff. And grab days. Yeah. This is Soundburst, which is our, our 
um, spite spawn little once per day ability. Okay, you can see Tartuccio there, he looks like he's having a bit of a bad time. Come at me, I dare you. So they are initiative they're at six, they're at two point six. Lindsay's at one, so hopefully she'll kill that one. But what we're we gonna do we're gonna daze Your time is one. over. I'm letting you out of our story. <laughs> so you can see that our DC is 20, and it just so happened that they rolled a natural 20. So they had a 1 in 20 chance of passing that, and they did. So, not a good start. You're just in time. A bit longer, and I'd have been... Whew, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed, ready to lead you to victory. What an asshole. Lady Jamandi is holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. Speaking of dummies, take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. So, uh, yeah, he's even prejudiced against halflings. How could you? So what he's done is he's given us magic ring. Here, Tartuccio's present now. We have three options to this. One, we can put it on. Two, we can leave it in our inventory. Or three, we can throw it away. And uh, each one of those will change how the final um, uh, conversation in this, in this prologue turns out. But we're just going to put it on for now. And we're going to take Lindsay, and we're going to upgrade her armor there, even though this means she can, can't can move at all. So as a halfling, her speed is already down to, 30, down to 20, and because she's crossed over into medium encumbrance, she's now at 15. But hopefully, I don't tolerate fools. that will mean she's less likely to get hit. Take that. Now, what's coming up is, uh, I guess, <laughs> what you might jokingly refer to as the second hardest fight in the game. <laughs> because these two enemies and the one in our room had this big penalty to their, uh, to their attack rolls to everything. Whereas this lot don't see that. They've got regular stats. They've got regular bab. They can actually hit really hard. So we need to be quite careful here, hence why I uh, will just quick save just in case. And Lindsay was called but we're going to put Lindsay up front because she's got the slightly higher armor class. And basically what we're going to try and do is we're going to use our sound burst and we are going to try and take them out. I always have a second plan. Leave this one to me. And we're going to let this play out in slow motion. So if you press V, see there? I'm tapping it. Um, you can advance almost frame by frame, or you can hold it down to advance in slow motion. And I use this a lot. It's something quite a few people um, don't really know about real time with pause, that you can have this incredibly granular control. So if I just let this play out here in slow motion, dare to attack me? auto pause based on um, initiating combat. One dead, and Lindsay hit. I'm actually going to move her there. One, and they're both stunned. It. So we should Away, you rascal. Just die already. be able to daze them. and let Lindsay take them out. If she does more than one damage. <laughs> Come on, 
Lindsay, you can do it. You're not that bad with a crossbow. Phew. Right. Any last wishes? So once we get the down to anything down to one enemy, we can just daze spam to keep them um, basically locked down. With two, with two people doing it, it's almost guaranteed. And with since they need to roll a, if we look here for us, they're still looking to roll. They've got a, a minus one penalty to wisdom, so they're still looking to roll a, a tw natural twenty only to pass. And Tartuccio, he's got. Um, very high charisma. I'll go through the characters in, in just a second. This is where I step in. Thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate it. So, just letting the ink dry. We can look at these um, these characters here. So, Lindsay is a bard. She's just a, a straight up bard. She's had her first feat in extra bardic performance, so she can use bard song, which will increase her uh, um, allies in a very large area's chance to um, chance to hit. You can see here. This is inspire courage. Um, gives this competence bonus on uh, attack and weapon damage rolls, which is really powerful since that increases as she goes up. And she also picks up other bard songs, like notably Dirge of Doom, so we can. Sh have enemies shaken, but I'll introduce this stuff as we as we gain it. What's important here is she's got a charisma of 16, so that's enough to cast uh, up to level 6 spells, which is all that bards get. She's got a relatively high dexterity, low strength, and you know the, the other stuff is quite um, is quite standard. Basically, this is a nice stat outlay for a support bard. She's rolling at plus four to hit, plus one because of size, so halflings. Because they're small, automatically get a plus one to size, similar to um, if you'd cast a reduced person on a medium person. You can still cast reduced person on them and they get tiny. But the downside to that is she's using a crossbow, which is um, 1d8 damage, but in her hands it's only 1d4 because she's little. Likewise for Tartuccio, actually. We'll have a look at him. He is a sorcerer with a red dragon bloodline, so his fire spells do an extra um, one damage per die rolled, um, which is quite relevant if you were doing, if you were trying to get through here on unfair, you'd want to try and position some flaming hands, and you'd not be be taking a, a face sorcerer, in my, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, his stats has got very low strength, He's got incredibly high charisma, same as us, which is why his dazes have a uh, an acceptable DC for this um, for this part of the game, and the rest of the stuff is pretty it's pretty standard. Low strength means he can't carry anything, but should note that that these are Adventures I deserve better. a sorcerer, a bard, and another sorcerer is quite a difficult starting pick because you've got nobody who can just sort of charge in and deal damage as you notice Lindsay really struggled to um, to hit there and when she does hit she hardly does any damage we'll have a look in here there's a little bark from uh, from Lindsay and from Totsuchio there this chest contains nothing of value there's a mace and uh, hide armor we don't need either of them and likewise, there should be a little bark when they're in here. Oh no, everyone is dead. You'll notice they're not um, they're not voiced. <laughs> Claim a little bit of gold and some uh, vendor items here. This is a, a guest kitchen. Yeah, and we're going to pick up. Um, it's a, a cookery book. It doesn't actually give you any cookery recipes, but we're going to be collecting lots of cooking ingredients because cooking bonuses are a category all all of their own and so they stack with um, all sorts of other bonuses so so bonuses of the same type such as here you see size bonus and dexterity bonus bonuses of the same type don't stack they uh, it's a sort of highest bonus uh, applies there are some exceptions like if we make him small he'll get a plus two bonus but say we had two sources of armor, 
mage armor and regular armor if you could wear it. They don't stack their um, its highest only, but the cooking bonuses are their own type of bonus. So this is this is a mirror. And actually, if um, if we were playing on unfair, we could just let this play out, and she'd deal with all of them. There's absolutely no need. She's she's invincible, which is um, much better than she is in the last fight, where she is most not invincible. Oh, it's you! Stay up from under my feet, or I'll strike you down. I'll talk about. Um, Amiri's class when we and her stats when we pick her up at the end of this chapter but suffice to say she's just a regular barbarian and in fact she's a she's a Pathfinder iconic so you know one of um, the Pathfinder archetypal characters as written in in the the pen and paper rule set Blood for Gorum! Gorum, God of Battles yeah. Barbarians I think that's exactly how heroes should be what, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria, save me from such heroes. <laughs> so, mention of two, two gods, or god and a goddess, in, in as many um, sentences. I, think, I don't know if there's any other... I don't know if Tachichu ever references Calistria ever again. So we've got a little confrontation here between assassins and uh, guards and <laughs> this enormous frost giant <laughs> who just turns them into ice. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, sorry, house guards. Fortunately, we're not expected to fight that. Um, generally, the the thing that's not worth picking up in this prologue is armor, because you can see the written, well, in this case, it's a shield, but the ratio of weight to gold is really poor. Likewise, a spear. This is my time to shine. Now. This can be quite, quite tricky. What troubles you? And Lindsay was called forth. What we're gonna do? A simple smile goes a long way. Is we've got this scroll of mage armor for the a reason. Is full of wonder. Yes. Well. Yeah. Keep it like that. I wrote it like I saw it. Um, uh, we're just gonna take that off, so we. Uh, it's not a difficult check. Applause, please. But just in case. So the problem with these two is we can we can lock them up with days almost like indefinitely. But Tartuccio and Lindsay's um, DC is not really high enough to um, daze two of them. So what we're going to try and do Friendship lasts forever. is we're going to try In light, me. and take out one. Adventures are exciting. Anything is possible. No time for idling. Stand down. And adventures uh, call to them. A simple smile actually, goes a long way. I don't tolerate right. fools. Okay, Just sing. The this is her bard song. This is gonna raise our attack bonus. You offend me. And what troubles you? Let's see how this plays out. They choose to stand against me. Two misses. It's unfortunate. We're gonna daze. Your time is over. Missile. Let's see with a Lindsay. You deserved it. Uh, Any Whoops. last wishes? 
See if we can get this bowman before he kills us. So, you'd be amazed how often things will fail. A uh, DC <laughs> things will uh, pass their their critical success only. But um, we're gonna try and days again. I don't really want to. There we go. Poor old Lindsay. This is where I step Turn in. Off. There we go. I wrote it like We're I gonna saw try it. and save the rest of this part song for the final battle. Which is um not not really difficult on this difficulty, although if you're playing on hard, these fights are really quite tough. We are encouraged to bust into the armory. And uh, Lindsay has successfully picked the lock. And uh, you'll notice there the DC was one. So um, this really is the tutorial. Now there's some complaints that the, the tutorial here doesn't. I've seen I've seen them, but it doesn't really do a very good job of explaining the game. And I think that's a semi-legitimate complaint. It the 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 difficulty ramps up as soon as you leave the tutorial. This, this is, um, just feels like quite a gentle way in. This we picked up here. Yeah, you can sort by um, date from newest to oldest. There's a masterwork mace, 100 gold, and a composite longbow, 100 gold. They're both worth stealing. This tower shield is not. This breastplate is, because we have somebody who can wear that soon. And this key we definitely want. Now the last thing to do is to interact with this chest. What have we here? This chest is full of gold. I guess it's part of the guard's salaries. All things considered. Well, those freeloaders don't seem to have been working too hard for it. Maybe we should pocket it instead. <laughs> what? No, we're heroes, not thieves. Who said we were stealing it? We'll just take the gold for safety so the assassins don't get it. And then we can heroically return it to Jamandi when this is all over. Do I smell some sort of entrapment attempt? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and we're a hero. We're not. We're not gold stealers. No distractions. Finally, a voice of reason. Eh, do what you want. I don't care. It was just a suggestion. But there's a lot of money in that chest, and with all these bandits running around, it wouldn't be any better if they stole it. So, yeah, we'll leave that gold, because we are not an idiot. Oh, familiar faces. I hope you're not so frightened as to swing at every shadow. It's me, Jathol. I don't recommend advancing down the hallway, assuming you value your life, of course. There were a few people with me, and you can see what happened to them. And just how did they all end up dead while you don't seem to have a scratch? I'll answer but briefly and just once. Further scares and explanations will wait until we aren't being hunted by a group of assassins. Deal? All right. I'm undead. These traps are deadly to the living, but they're harmless to me. What do you mean, undead? Really? Like zombies or skeletons or...? As I said, further <laughs> explanations will wait until later. All you need to know right now is that we're on the same side, and we have to fight off a small army of hired assassins. Let's get to it. So we've gained our fourth companion, and uh, basically things get uh, considerably easier from here, because Jethel, being undead, actually can't die, um, as one might expect. Now, look here. She's an inquisitor. Because she's undead, she doesn't have a constitution. Her health is actually, I believe, based off her charisma. Um, she's got reasonable strength. She's got reasonable wisdom for a, um, a divine caster up to level six. So again, that means she can she can cast level six. This is just very, very average. But the fact that she's undead 
uh, means that um, there there are some there are some additional benefits to, to playing with Jethor, and also some some penalties. It's it, she's harder to heal because positive energy, which you know regular healing spells consist of, will damage undead. She needs negative energy spells like inflict light wounds, inflict moderate wounds, that sort of stuff. And we can have a look at her class here. She's a cleric of um, Ogathoa, the goddess of the of undead. She starts with um, this death domain. From from this, as it makes sense, they have judgments which are one, which are sort of abilities that last one battle, so one combat encounter, which can give some nice benefits. And uh, um, what else? There's not that much to. Um, to say, we can look at her spell book. She has Divine Favor. This is a really good um, spell because it provides a luck bonus. And luck bonuses are, are relatively hard to come by. It only lasts one minute and doesn't scale per level though. So um, it's it's great for a level one spell if you um, remember to use it. But you know, by level five or six, your one minute per level spells will be lasting five or six minutes. This one is very much a sort of cast at the beginning of an encounter. Sort of spell and she also has inflict light wounds so she can heal herself um inquisitors are spontaneous casters like like a sorcerer so two spells per day much as we have five spells per day there and she is a three quarters bab class and she has this very snazzy side which is the weapon of ergothoa now there are some traps I'll share my path. in this corridor. In order to spot traps you need to make a perception check, which you can see we've done, they're very easy. And then to disarm it you need to make a trickery check, Applause, please. which you can see there. Um, now actually, Lindsay's, because of her slightly lower dexterity, so she's got 16 dexterity rather than say... Hey, have a 19 or 18 she actually struggles to to um, uh, disarm traps in the game so um, she's not my lucky day. in fact she struggles here <laughs> so that's something Anything we need to, to work to overcome because if you, you know, if you fail too badly you can set the uh, trap off this is very good weapon here um, vouchered um, because it's, it's got a longer range at six foot melee, so it's a reach weapon. And reach weapons are a bit like when you're enlarged. With a reach weapon, you can fight in the second row. So that's things like long spears, glaives, and vouchers. And the reason this one's really good is because it's got this 18 to 20 crit range, which is the hardest, which is the highest base crit range the you can get don't frighten me. of any weapon. Now, the, the disadvantage to that is that it requires exotic weapon proficiency. We're just going to set up our formation here. We're going to put um, Jethel in front. We're going to hide behind her. There. And we're going to stealth up there. Now you see me. Now you don't. So we can just get in position here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There we go. mention of someone's cash so <laughs> they hear us but we're we're stealth aren't we <laughs> so we're just gonna Serves you right. Let's make this quick. so if you attack from you know in real time with pause if you attack from from stealth or from nobody seeing you actually gain um, you get that free attack <gasps> at the beginning and Jethel will turn off that. And hopefully, Out of my way. we should just be able to Stand daze down. them you while Lindsay. <laughs> ah, I've missed it there. But see, Assassin deals damage to Jethel because that's because he had initiative. Oh, she hadn't made her first attack, so she was before her initial initiative had clocked over into her round one. So that enables them to be caught her to be caught flat-footed, meaning you can do sneak attack damage. 
So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're, we're okay. Sneak attack damage is very powerful in the game because it can it can you can stack a lot of extra extra damage um, and and it applies on every attack. In fact, there's a character who's almost um, uh, who's who's deliberately designed to make the most of sneak attack damage on magical attacks, and that's Octavia, who we'll meet quite a bit later. Take these healing potions now. We've got the prologue's puzzle. Here it is. Just loot these first. It's these these statues here, and we can click on them, and they're sort of go up. And there's a very easy way to remember this. If this is one and this is two, we go one, two, and then we move into the next room. So up, down, one, two, and here. We want to go up, down again. Up opens that. I'll share my path. And down. And then all we need to do is flip this one, and I'll open that door. But first, let's loot in here. So I'm going to demonstrate something here. Now we can actually kind of loot at range. And. Uh, this this chair here is not in fact a chair but a lot of people don't realize it because they don't get close enough because if you just loot like that you never you never know we're gonna turn off days on everyone and we're gonna just move chase the forward and this chair turns out to be some sort of ooze we can we can just inspect this here so we can see it's a level two aberration it's got one dexterity, one wisdom, and one charisma, and strength of 12. It's not uh, particularly challenging. Let's see how it goes. Oh. This it's... can't be over. Well, well. It did manage to do 15 damage to Jethel which is very unusual. We're going to have to do something a bit more serious about that. You offend me. Let's see what happens. It's immune to acid, I forget. Better not be immune Your to Your time cold. is over. Okay. There. <laughs> it's remarkable. <laughs> That's actually quite unusual to happen. Okay. Poor old Jaipal. It's one of the um, one of the most interesting things about the game is the RNG element that you know you can try as much as you want to control these things, but sometimes an ooze will do 15 damage to you when is my time to shine. you know 20 runs previously it done no damage at all this this is the second treasury room sometimes people don't know about this one so up down up down up one two three four five and it opens this and there's uh, there's a good monk weapon here this um must work nunchaku but mostly we want them because they're worth money and this Wand of Magic Missile is uh, a really useful thing to have early on. It only it only does one missile. You can see uh, uh, cast the level one, but still, Magic Missile always hits, and anything that always hits is good in my book. Me. We're going to it's stealth up. I'll share my path. So we've got some assassins here. We're gonna see. This is where I step in. Away, you rascal! I better. You'll die already. Uh, I always have a second. They're out of range, so 
don't do that. Just, Time to get my just prosperity dirty again. Long way. Sure and uh, we can we can risk our luck here and see whether Jethor will uh, not die. <laughs> Now we're still out there. Well, so okay. well, there we go. Stand down. And we can flip back to days because you offend me. That should almost guarantee a days in. Yeah. And hopefully. They they're both if we if we look, Lindsay. She doesn't have a, a precise shot. Nor does Tartuccio. He's got a spell focus and greater spell focus evocation. So they're both rolling at a minus uh, minus four to hit here. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world since Jethel can deal with it. And also we've got uh, KSC here, who's who's a fire kineticist at the moment, and she's sort of killing this assassin bowman here now. Um, uh, we can again. We can. We could have triggered this fight and run away, and that would have, uh, have meant that uh, we could have just left her to do it. We're gonna Serves you charge. Right. We'll see about charging this here. This body holds no more. There we go. You get a bonus to <laughs> hit if we have a look here. She gets a plus two bonus to charge from from her charge, but and I'll see whether we can see this. Her AC a minus two, so it will in fact you have say it my here. Attention. Oops. Yeah. Plus two to attack roll and minus two to, to AC. Plus you only get one attack when you when you charge. You don't get all your full attacks ah, for that round. Everything is so much fun with a little fire. What a night, <laughs> huh? I thought I was all alone. It's good you're here. A bit boring, chasing fool assassins without anyone watching the show. It's not fun at all. Many people have died for nothing. So, uh, we've actually, interestingly, we've missed a knowledge world check here. There's a hidden, hidden check to um, recognize her accent. I am Kayesi, one of the many here who seek a better fate. Answering the call of Lady Jamandi. But unlike the others, I never dropped my guard day or night. It's why I'm still alive. Um and, and missing that check sort of demonstrates like why this can't be a full completionist run because of course can't guarantee I'm gonna pass every check and I'm not willing to, to reload endlessly to do checks that aren't, you know, critically important. Uh, anyway. Uh, nice to meet Casey. Later, she still got red eyes. She was using her fire, fire kinesis powers. I don't know where you're heading, but I'll be at the entrance to the main hall. I think I saw some guards there. Join me there if you wish. So again, poor old Jethel. She's Sweet looking really desire. sick, and we don't have any um, uh, means to heal her at the moment. loot these uh, minor healing potions. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's the problem with being undead and it's one of the reasons why I'm not so keen on using oh, her sometimes. Is it just requires a little bit of extra effort. This is going to open this wall. A staple of RPG oh, mansions. Shit. This is Master Wit Longsword which is uh, we're going to be giving to a character. So we, we're now going to talk to um, Harabanon. Brutus, I can sense your silhouette hovering over me. It won't be much longer. Soon we shall meet, O oh Lord of Oblivion. So we, um, we can ask him what's wrong. I'm dying. I knew this expedition was doomed. O oh, Grotus, my vision darkens. So, so um, uh, I'll I'll bring Harem into our party, but enough to say that he he's a, a, a cleric of Grotus, a god of the end of all things, um, who who's 
trapped or, or resides within Phrasma, the uh, goddess of the dead's um, uh, boneyard. So, uh, yeah, quite an unusual calling for a cleric. We're going to attempt to um, use use our checks as reason why we've got our <laughs> charisma and persuasion so high. Uh, we can, otherwise, we can pour one of his potions into his mouth, and it just means he has one less potion. So, let's go diplomacy. That's impossible. Okay. <coughs> oh, it uh, it seems you might be right. Well, there you go. Yeah, it, uh, it seems I will live. I suppose I must postpone meeting my god, not for long, I'm sure. But while we remain in this transient world, Arim is at your service. Arim, Arim, it's missed the H. So, this is our fifth party member. Just awaits us. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we can have a look at um, Arim's stats. First of all, he's a cleric. And so he's a three quarters bab character with a full ninth level casting. And it's important not to forget that he is a full caster with a really good wisdom. With, I mean, it's not 19, but um, 18 is still very respectable wisdom for a cleric. So I guess I guess I would say it like a cleric with high wisdom can never be truly uh, bad. Um, He's got this penalty that he's got this dex of eight, so we have to do something about that. Um, and I tend to enlarge him quite a lot, which will dump his dex down to um, uh, six. So we need to work quite hard to make sure that doesn't um, present a, a penalty. Because if you look at his armor class, minus one dexterity bonus, he's slow as shit. He's got a respectable strength and a respectable constitution as well. The um, I wouldn't fall into the, the the sort of idea of thinking he should be in the in the front line, really. It, but he works very well in the as a second line, enlarged. And uh, he's got two blesses memorized here, and you can see his enormous uh, spell book. The the way cleric spells work is that it, when they gain a new level of spell casting, so they gain level one spells, the entire spell book is available to them to be memorized, but they need to, they're a prepared caster, so they need to put their spells in slots, and they can only cast what's prepared. So if we look the here, near. level one, two blesses, and uh, one true strike, and he can convert, spontaneously convert spells into healing spells. He can't spontaneously convert them into damaging spells, unfortunately, because that would be really cool. It would mean we could heal Jethel here. Request. So, yeah, not much she can do. Yes, so, I'm still here. Uh, just gonna have a little look here. He's got two domains. He's got chaos domain and he's got destruction domain, and that means that he. It means his, his these domain slots, uh, they're fine. I think is what I say. They 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 could be a bit better. And his his abilities, his chaos domain abilities, are just a bit, you know, it's a bit too sort of random for my liking. Whereas his destruction domain is is cool because he gets destructive smite, meaning um, he can add. This bonus to his uh, his attack roll, so he can actually dish out quite a lot of damage. As for his um, stats, he's got law, religion, and perception that have been pumped, and that's about it. If we compare that to Lindsay, who's got uh, knowledge arcana, knowledge world, and she takes a penalty to um, stealth because of the chain shirt I, <laughs> I put on her, and uh, she's also got trickery and use magic device. We'll swap her out of that chain shirt after the prologue, but it's just helpful that she's a I'll bit less likely path. to get hit. We're just going to come up here, and we're going to talk to Kiskin. You, run and get an axe. You, bring more water. You, stay here and hold our defense. Those assassins are still around here somewhere. Aha, some of our guests survived. Good. You need to get to the banquet hall and help Lady Jamandi. 
So as I as I said, uh, Keston here is a reoccurring character, and uh, he's going to be with us for quite some time. Um, so, who are you? Keston, House Gares, a fighter in the service of Sword Lord Jamandi Algori. Right now, I'm in charge of the Mansion Guards. As you can see, there's a lot to do. If I were a rich and influential lady like Jamandi, I'd also get myself a manly captain of the guard, or two. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. Okay, is that <laughs> bit thirsty? <laughs> What's going on here? Someone opened the gate, let in a group of assassins in the middle of the night. Now they've set the mansion on fire to cut off access to the hall. They don't want Lady Jamande to get reinforcements. We cleared the passage so you can get through. Just try to avoid inhaling the smoke. We'll be right behind you. We just need to put out the fire first to save the mansion. So this, this fire here is is cutting. Lady Jamandi off. Considering Lady Jamandi's fame, I'm not surprised that a whole pack of assassins were unleashed on her, including a giant. But what's at stake? What could anyone hope to gain? And I think this is the, the nub of it. Like, you yeah, know, we fought through here. So whoever's, you know, this didn't seem like a big issue, but somebody obviously thinks that this is, this is important enough that they'd unleash, you know, a whole squadron of assassins including that big old giant in order to stop us from going off on this expedition you'll remember that you know it involved a lot of people murdered in their beds like this is a big assassination attempt um we'll just ask where the hall is you'll have to run through the fire we've almost put it out at the entrance so your main concern should be to not inhale any smoke hold your breath and take the first right then head straight down the hallway and uh, they don't need any help putting out the fire, that's not an option, so we'll say we'll go immediately. Fire doesn't frighten me, thanks to hell's blood running in my veins. I'll go ahead and wait for you on the other side. Catch up! May Abadar keep you safe. Another god, Abadar, god of cities, laws, merchants and wealth. <laughs> god of so-called civilization. So before we do this, um, we're going to need to make an athletics check as we as we go through here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove Jethel's armor, which should give her seven. I think the athletics check is a ten, and I'm just going to save up. I will um, uh, reload if this doesn't work, but let's hope we pass it. And this is in the prologue. There's a little bit of introduction to these uh, storybook events, which are a sort of um, a great addition to these to these Alcat games that uh, you get a little you know choose your own adventure story uh, segue in um, in the middle. Now there's basically we're 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 running through here, and you can see it's written in in the like, it's written by Lindsay or, or you know you know in game it's written by by Lindsay. She refers to that scoundrel Tati which you know, is quite funny. Anyway, but first we're going to drench ourselves in water. And uh, we, there is no less dangerous passage if we, uh, since we listened to what Kesson said, he was quite clear that there was no other route. So we cover our nose and rush inside. And uh, that was good. In fact, these um, these next checks are just a bit harder if we delay. So, yep, we're going to go in. Yeah, here we go. So we see now Valerie, who. In the when we were in front of the stage, it was there, Jamandi was there, Valerie was just off to the left, standing there with a big shield and sword. And uh, she's using, and uh, it points out her her beauty. This is this is the whole theme of of Valerie. She's had a lot of issues in the past to do with uh, her looks, and so so she she's uh, been quite keen to make herself look. Uh, less beautiful including cutting her hair but uh, 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 we'll we'll learn about that as we go through because it's, it's a big theme to her to her companion plot anyway we're gonna go here we're gonna go for this athletic six and it's uh we've got athletic seven so let's hope we can, sorry not athletic six athletic nine phew we succeeded with a roll of 13 and we saved these people, we've done the good thing. 
Isn't that nice of us? Now what we've got to remember to do is to re-equip Jethil's armor. There. It's unfortunate that the game doesn't give you at least one potion of uh, inflict mild, inflict um, inflict light wounds because you know not to be able to heal her is quite a pain. Anyway, we're gonna arrange our formation. Let's go. We're just gonna let her die if that's the way things are gonna be. There we go, that'll do. And off we go. This is the, the final fight of the game. The um, so-called boss battle. And uh, whenever we leave a major area, we get this pop-up which allows us to take anything we might have missed and we can look and we can just survey if there's, if there's anything of value. Here, I don't think I've missed anything apart from this armor. Off we go. Yeah, and the, the leather armor is like one gold and 20 weight. It's just really not worth the effort. Unless you're desperate for your extra one gold, I guess. <laughs> okay. Some sort of summoning circle, and that's Jamal the Eldori. She is a very competent fighter. She's a. Although she's just taking 30 damage, 33. From the chance. So these rift channelers are sort of keeping this lock locked up, and we've got an assassin leader here. Two, three regular assassins and warriors, and these bowmen as well, which are rogues, which means they um, will get sneak attack damage. These rift channelers are wizards, but they don't fight back, and the assassin leader not inspected. So we're actually going to just buff up. A little bit here. We don't. Trouble? We don't need to do it in the in the previous room. We are going to enlarge harem. And this is this is Casey here. She's going to help us out. The world is full of wonder. We are going to reduce Lindsay. And we are going to reduce Valerie. So this will increase Lindsay's chance to hit. It will um, keep Valerie's chance to hit the same, but will increase her armor class. Due to the way that the dexterity plays out. And Time's wasting. we are going to get Lindsay to them. sing her bard song. And hopefully... Here. Okay. As you order, speak. Well, so oh. I am your shield. And we are going to yes. cast I'm still here. Bless. So Don't we're hesitate. Gonna go. I'm just gonna quick save just in case. We're gonna send Valerie out first. Share your will. Jethel. Harem. Spring touch it cheer up. What troubles you? Bring Lindsay up. No time Let's for bring idling. Alice up. Who is going to try and tase the leader here? And we'll just turn off inspect. To victory! So. Let us strike as one! Repent! Lindsay? Serves you going right! Attack. Touch it, you. Leave this one to me! And we can see from the lines that they are all attacking Valerie, which is great. Casey here is now, for some reason, using Water Blast. Wouldn't really mean anything to you unless you knew your uh, uh, kinesis. So we're going to see if this is going to work. As you see there, we've managed to daze, and hopefully, we're not Do being not attacked. Oh, we're attacking. Your life no. ebbs low. You deserved it. One dead. What a waste! You're stuck already! 
we can, in fact, cast Ear Piercing Storm. Should stun. Yeah, so Ear Piercing Scream stuns for, I believe, one round. Oh, sorry, it dazes for one round and does some damage as well. And in fact, a roll of five is really good there. We're going to get Tachichu to kill again. this one here, and that'll leave one back. Repent! Out of my way! Leave this oh, for me. Assassin has passed their uh, Your time check, or else I forgot to yeah, see. Well, then, twenty. And now, Onward. I should probably <laughs> activate uh, uh, Jethel's uh, judgment. So these are her Inquisitor judgment. They uh, they give little bonuses which become big bonuses later on. So we're going to take bonus to attack there. Let's see whether we can take out some of those bonus. Tachicho, cast acid. Why aren't you moving up? Okay. Any last wishes? So let's see. Stay behind we can take me. out this bowman and keep the leader dazed. Unfortunately, they're about to. Okay, spell fail, that's really good. Let us strike as one. Your life ebbs low. Lindsay. This is where I step in. Uh, Time to get my hands dirty again. Okay, we've basically won. No big deal. Let's let this play out. Do not falter! This was, uh, I don't know if you see attack of opportunity, that's because if you use a ranged weapon while you're in a threatened range, Onward. you're gonna incur an attack of opportunity which can turn you to Swiss cheese. Out of my way! And that is it. Wretched. With the power of our days, we should be able to just take this uh, individual down. Use true strike here, which will mean that the next attack has plus 20 to hit. Not that we need it. Stay behind me. And we'll wrap up. Yeah, Casey has already killed this one. And we'll kill the last one. Simple. Look at the size of Lindsay. Isn't she sweet? And so tiny. Somebody that small should not be using a crossbow. Like, blast them away. So we managed that in eight rounds. If we were doing that in turn-based, I would have just groaned. But a lot of people like it, so um, more power to them. Up here, just a little bit of this note of cryptic marks and notes. You know, just a little bit more info about how you know strange things are happening. The plan... Hmm, pardon me. Plans are afoot. We're going to loot up first. Take these healing potions. We'll loot the leader. Here we go. He's got braces of armor class one there. Now this is I talked about stacking um, bonuses and, and bonuses not stacking. You'll notice we've got AC seventeen for Alice, and that uh, includes an armor bonus of plus four. These are braces of armor plus one, and if we stick them on, you'll notice our AC doesn't change because. These only provide a plus one bonus, which doesn't stack with the plus four. But we'll keep them on just in case we don't. We have chances where we don't have uh, mage armor up, which will happen. Not that um, <laughs> having uh, a thirteen armor class is really going to, to do anything at all, um, or fourteen with Tatsuchi as present here. So we can just sort by. Um, so we picked up a potion of bark skin, which is quite cool. But that should almost be everything. However, we're going to do a bit of finessing. We're going to empty Aram's <laughs> infantry here, except we, we'll leave him this stuff. Main thing is we're going to take this heavy shield and we're going to empty Jethel's infantry. 
And the main thing is we're going to take her 100 gold value side. That's uh, uh, nice of us, isn't it? And we're going to take empty Tartuccio's inventory. Of these potions. And we're going to steal this crossbow too. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to loot this, uh, <laughs> this giant's corpse. And we'll take both of those things. And that's it. Let's end the prologue. Thank you for your valor and bravery. The enemy was strong, but you were stronger. And that means I made the right choice. Just as I thought, there were worthy leaders among you. I'm especially grateful to them for the courage and common sense they showed while defending the mansion. But this attack means we have even less time than I thought. Someone already knows of our plans and is acting against us. You'll begin your expedition immediately. <laughs> but who? Who did this? Lady Aldori, please, I know who arranged this attack. The vile king of Pitax, Iroveti. What's more, I know who among us works for him. Hey, you! Show everyone the ring you're wearing. You think I wouldn't recognize Iroveti's seal? That's why she wasn't killed. The bandits recognized her as one of their own by this signet ring. <laughs> so yes, um, I think uh, quite obviously, you know, Tatuccio, what an unpleasant piece of work. He's also, um, he's entrapped us by giving us, giving us the ring. Fortunately, our diplomacy means this is a, a basically an auto, auto success here. Yes, such a gambit would be typical of Iravetti and his henchmen, and yet it still seems suspicious. Yeah, so, so if it's either in grey text here, this will tell us you know, a bit about how our prior choices affected whatever's going on at the moment. We could have thrown it away. We could have kept it in our pocket. Each of the uh, three options gives us um, a different app, a very slightly different outcome. Like not a, not a different outcome, but a different uh, path through this this dialogue tree. To put it in uh, game terms, there's definitely a spy among us. But who? All I have is one word against another. I'm afraid you're both under suspicion. They both came to your aid, Lady Germandi. But a liar's cunning knows no bounds. I've never met these two or their companions. For all I know, they're all conspiring spies. So, so now you should be tweaking that there's something very odd. Uh, with uh, Casey, you'll see her, her eyes are now blue. She was using water blasts when she was using fire blasts before. And for some reason she's saying she's never met either. Um, Alice or um, Tartuccio, when clearly she has. Oops, there we go. How could you say that? We fought together. We literally went through fire together. And then you vanished into thin air after you promised you'd wait. So, yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, not too smart, <laughs> hasn't tweaked that there's something up. My words might be rash. I bet my life despise anyone but this woman. I saw how she dealt with those creeps with my own eyes. A true warrior, I'd go with her through hell and high water. This purple crook, on the other hand. He's got the eyes of a spy, and the mug of a spy! <laughs> yeah, and Mary clearly doesn't like gnomes. But uh, beyond that, uh, um, she's pretty cool. She's got her back. Lady Algori, don't listen to this thick-headed barbarian. She doesn't know what she's talking about. During the attack, our leader showed her true colors. She forced us to break into the armory <laughs> and rob it. Yes, thanks, Tatuccio. She spins everything against us. So this is the first of two choices in this um, little dialogue that determines who our initial companions are in Chapter 1. And we can go lawful neutral. This is alignment. Um, related, this will shift our alignment in the lawful neutral direction, or we can go chaotic neutral, which will shift it in that direction. But whichever one we do will um, determine whether we get um, uh, Valerie or Harem. So 
we want Valerie, not Harem. We want Harem as well. In fact, we want them both. But uh, we're going to um, go with, with Valerie first. Considering the circumstances, that was more than reasonable. That was a sound decision. Sometimes one must act at one's own risk and peril until crossing the boundaries of what is allowed. Showing initiative is no crime. Yeah, thanks, Valerie. It is insane when faced with death to stop and question whether you may be breaking some law or rule. Even more insane would be to ask forgiveness for making the right decision. So it is Sorry, but your words display a lack of wisdom. Yeah, so I was going to say that this is effectively an introduction to, to you know, companions disagreeing with you and the way alignment choices have consequences. What about that trick she pulled right before we came in here? She knew very well you were fighting the enemy, but instead of rushing to help you, she dallied as long as she could, dropping everything to save people from the fire, even though the guards were handling things just fine. She was obviously hoping to show up too late and find you already dead. That is a lie. That's a lie, Tartuccio. Anyway, um, so the previous one was on the lawful chaotic axis, this one's on the uh, good evil axis, and obviously Alice is um, you know, going to pick the good choice here because uh, we couldn't leave those people to die. Really, Tartuccio? You're seriously trying to blame someone for saving people from a fire? <laughs> I always laugh at the way they managed to get around uh, um, not knowing what your name really is in, in the voice acting. Um, <laughs> I think we use all sorts of creative ways to make the dialogue flow and then insert sort of name variable into into the text here. Anyway, we've succeeded all these checks. May Shellen spare me from ever having to make such a choice, but she behaved decently as a true leader. Yeah, Lindsay's got her back as well. A true leader is someone who has their priorities straight, not someone who would put a valuable ally's life in danger for the sake of some servant. <laughs> An evil undead. How, how unsurprising. Enough squabbling. I'm still not sure which of you I can trust. However, the risk of entrusting the whole affair to a spy is too great. Here's what we'll do. Two teams will head out. That way, I'll know at least one group can be counted on to serve my interests in the stolen lands. <laughs> Maybe she's given away too much there. Lady Aldori. Most of those who were to set off for the Stolen Lands have been killed. Those who yet live will require help. Please allow me to join the expedition. So, um, uh, Valerie's going to come with us. I'll, I'll go through her stats right at the, very, at the very end. I'm sad to lose such a talented warrior. But you're right, Valerie. They have greater need of you right now. Go, and may Abadar keep you. Which of the two teams would you prefer to accompany? If my leader allows, I would join her team. She seems a worthy commander in my eyes. If my leader allows, I will join if my leader, yeah? <laughs> Creative voice acting. Commanders, military leaders, all these laws and rules are but dust and vanity. I suppose I will accompany Tortuccio. So yeah, this is this is the consequence here. No harem. Our leader is good in battle, but I don't like all the spiritual agonizing. I prefer those who can act without wasting time helping every little pipsqueak. Those like Tartuccio. Yeah, so so and no um, Jethel either. We'll get them later. It's just uh, not at the moment. Ugh, Tartuccio's going to take the credit for himself and be done with it. Shellen, spare me from such allies. I'm going with you. You're a hero worthy of my quill. Thanks, Lindsay. As for me, I know neither of these two. At least, not well enough. And I have no wish to become an unwitting pawn to an unworthy leader. If Lady Jamandi allows, I'll remain in Restoff and help mend the wounds this attack has inflicted. But who knows? The road may bring me to the Stolen Lands, but not yet. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's like like it's teasing the DLC. <laughs> I don't even need.
need to think. I'm coming with this woman. As for you, Purple Toad, just wait until we meet along the way. I'll be sure to hang your rotten spy guts from the trees. All right, we have two teams. To avoid unnecessary conflict on the road, you'll each take a different route to the Stolen Lands. Tartuccio's team will go through Navactas Crossing. The Garrison Commandant will provide him all the help he needs. You will take your team to Oleg Leviton's trading post. He's been complaining about the Stag Lord's bandits for a while now. There, you'll be provided with all the necessary travel supplies. I'd like to believe you, but I know all too well how convincing traitors and spies can be. If you're truly innocent, I hope you can forgive me this precaution. While you're away, Keston will investigate the night's events and learn who in Restov is working for Patox. But you should know that it isn't just Patox we need to worry about. The Royal House of Sertova may also interfere in our plans. I've managed to keep this affair a secret from them so far, but that can't last long. By my estimations, you have no more than three months. After that, any feats you accomplish will be pointless. So there's a few important things here. One is it sets this hard time limit of three months. Uh, we can't go any can't go any longer than that, uh, which is which is really important. And and secondly, that there's other political issues at stake. Now, three months time limit is very generous, um, but it is possible to eat up your time accidentally through not really knowing game mechanics very well so um, so I, I can understand people that don't like the time limit but I kind of think it, it's an essential part of the of the game like you can't just fiddle around indefinitely like there needs to be some sort of sort of pressure even if it's very light pressure however there is a, a small bonus for completing this chapter chapter one next chapter first chapter in less than 30 days so instead of three months it's, it's one month and we'll be going for that it's not too difficult to, to achieve if you know what you're doing um, in fact it's, it's actually quite hard to fail if you know what you're doing and you you don't forget some essential stuff it's possible to do it in in 20 days but but 30 days is 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 quite enough to to do that and i'll, I'll be going for that just to sort of showcase what the easiest way to do it is, basically. And now, farewell. This battle was but the first ordeal along your path, and you overcame it as true champions of Restolf. May the obstacles that follow also fall to your feet. Fear nothing, my friends, and return victorious. That's it. Prologue done. I'm going to pause the video right now.